बिकॉज वी हैव गॉट अ देवी वी हैव गॉट अ पूनम वी हैव गॉट अ दीप माला वी हैव गॉट अ चित्रंजन साहब वी हैव गॉट अ प्रोफेसर वॉल्फ अमान एंड वी हैव गॉट अ आई थिंक ऑल कवर्ड राइट एंड ऑफ कोर्स डॉक्टर विशाल विल टेक अस टू अ विशाल प्लेटफॉर्म वेयर वील बी एबल टू रियली लुक इन टू द बिगेस्ट स्पेक्ट्रम टू फाइंड आर स्पेस ऑफ सॉल्विंग प्रॉब्लम एंड कमिंग आउट विद एक्शनेबल सोल्यूशन टू द प्रॉब्लम वी आर एनकाउंटरिंग राइट तो ओवर टू डॉक्टर टी देवी dignitaries on the dais and off the dais faculty members scholars student friends a very warm good afternoon to all of you technology and sustainability strategies and challenges in the context of the global south is the topic next slide please technology already in the morning session next slide they touched upon four industrial revolutions first on steam second one on electricity third one on information system and the fourth where we are now is on combination of technology and human capabilities bridging the gap between the two or combining the eff effectiveness of both so now we are witnessing self learning algorithms self driving cars human machine interconnections if you look at the bottom early 19th century first revolution 20th century so it took a century between the two technological revolutions but look at between second and third one it took 70 years now between the third and fourth one it took only 30 years and already industry 5.0 which is about bridging or combining the technology and human capacities using quantum computing is already in its way so now the technological revolutions are happening so fast and the society is naming it as disruptive technologies next slide please we all heard this term artificial intelligence and augmented reality cloud big data internet of things these are the technologies which are helping using which we are trying to build an intelligent information society next please the common theme among all the industrial revolutions are speed and energy race is always about achieving the speed by exploiting the energy <coughs> so technology is trying to provide digital solutions for the problem through softwares we had a session on skills so that the students will be ready to face the vuca world advanced technological infrastructure is needed next slide please when you look at the applications smart you add the term smart with everything smart manufacturing sustainable agriculture smart supply chain green buildings green computing green means it should not affect the environment the carbon emission should be minimized smart cities under smart cities you go on google on bin e smart bin smart education edutech companies are coming up like anything and smart healthcare or telemedicine digital therapeutics so earlier when we have to uh, segregate the waste into compost and decompose it's very difficult now with ai you just put the item the machine itself will segregate and decompose it so the technology is helping the mankind to reduce his efforts or to speed up the work or to automate the repetitive tasks next slide please why i have put this is yesterday night for the sake of this conference i've learned about indian knowledge system you know you introduce the word iks under this session so we in water management in those days in ancient days we used step wells next slide please this is for the civil architecture konark next slide sustainability everyone knows this next slide sustainable technology paves the path to innovation innovation is the keyword we have to move from rote learning 
or practicals to innovation, new products, new prototypes. Sustainability is a development model that can meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations. Next slide. There is a very good, next slide please. There is a very good report from McKinsey about future. What jobs will be available in the future? Automation and artificial intelligence will drive the world. So autonomous cars, cars that drive themselves, machines that will read the x-rays and help the doctors to make the decisions, algorithms that will automatically respond to customer service inquiries. Next slide. Please. So where automation can be applied? In oil and gas industries, the performance gain by applying automation is 85 percentile. In automotive, it will be 86 percentile of performance gain. In pharma industry, new drug design and development, 96 percentile. And in mar digital marketing, it will be 90 percentage of per. These are the areas where AI will be applied. Next slide. And that report is a 200 pages report. It has given in 2030 what will be the jobs that will be available in India and other countries also. As you can see here, the healthcare, like doctors, nurses, therapists, there will be plenty of jobs in this area. And school teachers, post secondary teachers, education support systems, other educational professionals. Next slide. And computer engineers and construction workers, civil engineers, there will be plenty. Next slide, please. Skip this. Skip these use cases. Skip. Yes. See, there is a beautiful report from McKinsey Global Institute where it has listed the AI capabilities on the left-hand side and all the column headings relate to SDGs, equality and inclusion, education. Just two more, two minutes equity and inclusion, education, health and hunger, security. So these are all the SDG goals. It has nicely mapped where the capability of AI will be applied onto SDGs. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next. If you look at the bottlenecks that are listed in the McKinsey Global Institution report, the data accessibility, data quality are very, very like difficult to get. And uh, AI practitioners, talent availability is a big question mark. Even if they are available, the cost that you have to pay for them is very huge. If an NGO has to apply artificial intelligence and solve some societal problem, it will be very difficult to catch hold of the uh, AI practitioners. Next slide, please. Next. Next. IoT plays an important role. This slide shows IoT enabled sustainable development goals in life on land, zero hunger, good health and well-being. Next slide. Yeah, what are the challenges? Data needed for the social impact users may not be easily accessible for NGOs and the expertise availability is very difficult. Technological advanced infrastructure is needed when we have to process huge data, so the cost will be more the data security becomes a big problem, and once the data moves on to the digital world, then the threat to the value system is a big question mark. Next slide. I'll stop in two, one, half a minute. Sir. So there is a growing body of research on the ethics of artificial intelligence, and when the bias is there in the input data, automatically the outcome will be very risky. And safe use and security are very, very essential when you apply AI. Next slide. So how will a country innovate? If you look at the students coming for research, very less in number. The interest in research need to be improvised, but students do not want to get into research. We create top-notch corporate labor force, people who are best for the industry, for the mundane work. Environment for innovation needs to be improved. Startups will succeed if innovation is there. Next slide. So, if you look at the startups in the entire world, we are ranking in sixth place. Next slide. Next. So if, when you look at the strategies, the common problems across the globe can be identified. We can teamwork across the countries, and the future belongs to those who invent. So all our research that are available in the PhD thesis form should be translated into societal products. 
So translational research is the need of the hour and the creativity, ideation, problem solving should be taught from ninth standard. Next slide. Interdisciplinary research, trigger innovation and inventions. AI cutting across different AI for bioscience, AI for green chemistry should be introduced. Next slide. This is the framework for translational research. Next slide. See, we, we have worked, next slide please. We have, next slide. We have worked in this area right from 2019 under the leadership of the former Vice Chancellor, Professor Kalidaj, and we have looked at how AI is useful in environment management, how big data analytics is useful in the healthcare industry, and we have come out with five books, one on AI, big data, IoT, cybersecurity, and industry 4.04 for education, disruptive teaching and learning. Next slide. There is a website given at the bottom, b-u.ac.in slash industry4 for education, which gives details about the book and one sample chapter. The books are published by Taylor and Francis. Next slide. The books were released in 2022. We were working in those areas without knowing that we are touching on SDG. But when this opportunity came, the books content, which are from industrial experts, like IBM vice president has written a chapter on AI in environment management. KMCH owner has written it. So it nicely fits into achieving SDG goals. Thank you for the wonderful opportunity. Now we'll have the pleasure of listening to our keynote speaker. Good afternoon and a million apologies uh, for going probably a little bit faster. We have compressed the time. Um, but if there are any questions open, please never hesitate to reach out via LinkedIn. Happy to share more or continue our dialogue. So technology and uh, sustainability, what are some of the problems and what is the way forward? Uh, a condensed version of uh, my view of the world to which I invite you. I think there are three problems we have with technology at the moment. Uh, one is uh, a concentration of ownership and power. Uh, there is sort of a mafia around AI. Yes, you get to use AI if you want to ask what the weather is and things like that, but as an asset or more asset generation um, tool, we don't have access to it. Uh, the second uh, problem that I see is that, unfortunately, for the first time in history, we are getting outpaced by, by technology. Um, our human adaptability is slower than the technological, technological uh, one. Um, let me just illustrate uh, your awakeness and this point in a, in a brief exercise. Can you please find the anom anomaly in the next slide? What is the anomaly? One, two, three. Found it? AI needs less than a second to find the anomaly and first to understand what the anomaly may well be. Less than a second. All of the cases I teach in my really high-end uh, uh, classes uh, that are as expensive as it, as it gets, if I enter the cases into an AI, they need uh, less than a second to solve it. I teach uh, the board majors who should be a CEO. And we feed the system with the information uh, who became Nike CEO and was that CEO successful. Human teams need hours to evaluate and to decide AI can do it in less than a second. And they skip the candidates that fail. And the rationale which is printed um, is actually hard to argue with. So, so how, how do we create value if whatever top students would produce can be beaten quality-wise in one second? Um, the third problem I see is that uh, dissemination um, of key sustainable technologies are way too slow. We have the technology, but where are they used? Um, we have, we have uh, I think, the US greenlighted another $70 billion for warfare and uh, impeding people from moving where they want to. Um, but where are the funds for these kind of uh, solutions? Uh, they're, not, uh, they're not there. So are there also solutions? I don't want to get you too much in a negative mode after uh, after lunch. Um, I think there are, and we need to remember uh, why do we have companies in the first place? Uh, not to produce certain figures, but 
in line with management guru Peter Drucker to, to optimize our strengths and minimize our weaknesses. And this is something we are, I think we forgot uh, too, too often. But of course, we have to measure. Um, and one of the tools that I work with is um, Clifton's analysis of strengths. We all have strengths. Even the biggest idiot that you meet has top strengths. We just need to find out what they are. And the likelihood that your strengths matches the likelihood of the person sitting next to you, no matter age or gender differences, is one in 33 million. But are we able to tap into this potential? Yes or no? I think uh, often we are not. But if we do, strengths-based organizations clearly outperform others. If we have strengths-based leadership looking into what's right with somebody, not what's wrong. We have massively more uh, engagement. Um, and since everybody's salary is paid for anyway, why not tap into this huge potential? And we know that from our private life. If we start by figuring out and by pointing out what's wrong with our partners versus what's right with them, we have very different results. So in that sense, uh, high engagement organizations uh, produce much better numbers uh, than low engagement organizations. If somebody just moves into higher orientations of strengths, performance goes up by 36% bottom line. Yeah. Once more with everybody's salary being uh, paid for. So why not think about that? Um, in the morning, Professor Pillay talked about we should not be smarter, or we should be smarter than AI. I think these times actually have already gone. I use AIDA in my seminars to go adaptability, environmental context. Um, it's a tool relatively inexpensive. Uh, it works with a number of uh, models uh, on, on abilities, environments, um, and these skills do not exist in humans anymore around the world. Um, if you want to have an analysis on what the organization needs to do, be it exploring new ideas or just make incrementally better what's there, AI can puke out uh, the statistics in an organization quite, quite reliably. And we don't even know anymore uh, all the algorithms that are in place. If it's about workplace health, do I belong here? Do I belong to an organization? Or do I get better my resume and shape and move? AI can give you the answers as well as the distribution of staff members who are there. Emotional health. I mean, what is a good workplace? AI can calculate faster than probably uh, we can and explain so on. The work environment, um, the number of uh, people that are stressed in an organization, we can have dashboards as easily accessible as ever before to manage better, more humanistically, and more effectively. But it all is linked to saying, OK, what strengths do we have, and how do we get there? This also means we as leaders, as future leaders, be it in academia and in industry, we, we shouldn't just be the thermometer measuring, you know, what's going on, are people happy and engaged? We should be the thermostat setting, setting the temperature. Uh, that is our ultimate responsibility. And my recommendation, even in an age of ever fasting, ever faster technology, uh, we should, we should uh, live up to this expectation. 16% globally say the last conversation with my boss was meaningful. Come on, let's step up, let's step up and do a little bit better. When doing so, further recommendations. Um, as mentioned on, in, as illustrated in the left uh, picture, uh, we could dream of the perfect uh, well-being organization that we would never start with because it's just too complicated. Let's start with small steps. What can we do next week to make it better? Next month and then in the fall we take it forward. And on the right side I wanted to illustrate with this image that, hey, Yes, Elon Musk is very visual. Bill Gates had that kind of uh, background and, 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 and potential. And Schwarzenegger has a better body than I do. I should work with what I have. We all have our unique strengths. If we play it to our strengths, we have at least a chance. AI performs better than 99% of society in average. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not be average. Let's focus on what we are strong in, and then we have a chance. Concluding with a, I, I'm not I, intentionally showing you my back, so I don't see you when you want to interrupt me. <laughs> last slide, last slide. Um, Roger Federer, is that a name that rings a bell? 
first billionaire sports person in the world. I think there's a lot we can learn from him. Um, he has a surf that is so powerful, that has so much spin, uh, that is very hard for the opponent to even enter into the game. The game doesn't even start for the opponent. And that's, I think, something we should, we should focus on. Roger Ferrer doesn't work on his weaknesses. He knows he has weaknesses, and all of us have, but he practices his strengths to outcompete any other. My call to action, and since I'm a professor, I want to spread a little bit of homework. Um, what is your kill app? Roger Federer's kill app is his surf. What is your unique strength? What do people come to you for? And next time you meet, you hopefully have better an answer for that. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much for doing justice to time and uh, justice to the topic even. Thank you so much. Next, may I have Mr. Poonam Pandey. Sorry, Dr. Deepala. First of all, thank you, Atmia University, for having me here. And dignitaries on the dais, off the dais, all those who are present here, a very good afternoon. Because of the paucity of time or the rearrangement of the presentation, uh, I had something, whatever I have prepared for this presentation, now I will be a little bit tweaking it. And uh, according to the afternoon session, I will begin. So usually what happened when we take afternoon sessions, uh, I personally like to begin with stories. Because stories are a very good medium to understand any type of uh, theoretical, conceptual aspects. So in today's presentation also, very quick, two short stories. And from there onwards, we'll try to understand the challenges as well as strategies needed for the sustainability and technology coexistence. So first story, the story from the Greek mythology, Daedalus and Icarus, fathers and duo. Uh, they were captivated and kept in prison by the king. Now, Daedalus, a very renowned sculptor, he wanted to set he, uh, himself and his son free. So he has just thought about the various ways. And as an innovator, he thought out with a very good kind of uh, setting himself and his sons free of a strategy. Uh, he has prepared the wings for himself and his son, uh, and the wings are made up of feather and wax. Then he has given his son a piece of advice. Son, don't fly too low, as well as don't fly too high. Okay, this set of advice, now son and father, both with the help of wing, they have set themselves free. Son, being ambitious, being a modern understanding about the uh, no limits, no rule kind of new economic aspects. So when he began to fly, he flew so high, higher and higher, and he reaches close to the sun, wings being made up of wax, melted, and you know the result. Okay. So this story help us to understand we all are actually caught in such type of situation wherein we have begin to utilize the natural resources, but we forgotten that there is a limit. There is a limit to utilization. There is a limit to grow. There is a limit to fly high. And now we are in a position or we have arrived at the stage wherein we are reaching closer and closer to our debacle, that kind of scenario we are in. So this is a one kind of understanding that we need to understand. Strategically, we need to plan so that we should not reach too high to reach to our end. That's the simple way of understanding from here. 
Now I want to take you to the another scenario, which is more related to the fictional, uh, related to the non-fictional real world. I am presently engaged in research on ESG related parameters in small scale industries situated in Maharashtra. During my research, I come across a very good example that I want to narrate here, elaborate further. Uh, there is a one Sanstan at District Place Cooperative. This cooperative Sanstan has come up with a very innovative idea, which has actually, why it is innovative? Because it is catering to all the three parameters of ESG, environment protection, social upliftment, as well as governance, which is often not that much cared for by the organization or businesses. This is a startup that they have organized and the startup has been initiated by the 1000 women from different villages. They come together to find out the solution for the economic sustainability. Basically the idea was to have the steady income for the, these rural women. What is the idea? Collect the agriculture waste from their own farm, those who don't have form from the others. There are a mechanism that they have planned, a very strategic planning has been involved in. Organizations like IIT Bombay has given them the expertise, knowledge, and with the help of IIT and other organizations, government MSME department is also providing them help. So what they have done, collection of the agriculture waste and converting into a biomass. You all know we all are facing a energy related problems. Global South basically suffers from various developmental challenges. Here you cannot just think about the environmental protection while ignoring the social and governance aspect. You have to bring in the holisticness in your efforts, in your strategic planning, then only you can aim. Otherwise people won't accept that. So this particular model, I won't go into much detail of it, Biomass which has a demand in, because it is an alternative fuel model for the coal based industries. Electricity requirement at the industrial level can be fulfilled with the, this renewable form of energy. These women actually with the help of the expert knowledge domain institutions, with the collaboration, they are in a position to create the economic sustainability with them. Along with that, they are also providing solutions for the environment protection. They are also targeting at the social sustainability by empowering themselves and creating a decision-making power for themselves, for women at that ruler level, which other people are not that much able to think about it. So these two examples help us to understand what exactly needed for the sustainability and technology coexistence. Another interesting point is that these rural women and this group, this uh, cooperative, actually they are using the technology. AI's utilization is very rampant to monitor the agriculture waste, segregation of the agriculture waste, collection of the agriculture waste, and the other manufacturing process. It's completely technology-based activities that they are doing at that level. So this is a, a good example which help us to understand that there are challenges at local level, but there are a solution as earlier presenters has very well said that the gaps are there and the solutions are also existent in the local context. Our view towards looking at the problem and solution requires rethinking. And that rethinking comes from the value system that you will build within yourself. So don't be too ambitious and don't be too overconfident that we are the ones who will find the solution for each and everything. No, nature has its own course of action. So our first story gives us the value system that we need to follow on. Our second example help us to look at the social context, the context wherein everything has been situated. You need to find out the solution for that. Because according to research, there is no dearth of the capitals, either financial or human resources. It is there. The dearth is about having a creative mindset, having an innovative aspect in alignment with the value system. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for respecting the time limit.
Now we'll have the pleasure of uh, listening to the perspective from Mr. Poonam Pandey. Mr. Poonam Pandey, please. Oh, Dr. Poonam Pandey. Puran, okay, sorry. Sampurnata. Hmm? Uh, thank you so much indeed, and I'm truly privileged to be here. And I bring continuity from the first conference and I have tried to improve over the last two years in my learning, in my approach, in my thinking altogether. And I stand here with the bill of the God and providence. Now let me begin by saying three things. One, if you really look at uh, the graphic on, on this particular slide, it is basically about two things, if you really notice it very carefully. Uh, it is about hand-holding nature. And nature is made up of several things, but air, uh, trees, solar panels now, because you are trying to clean up, and the rest of it. So ultimately, sustainability, when I think about it, my work has been into this area for a pretty long time. It is about two things, basically. I mean, we can go on defining it theoretically, there's no end to it. It's about two things. It's about human and nature harmony. Relationship is not as important as the harmony that we have been trying to look forward to. So hand-holding trees and you know, air and whatever else will go along with it. So it is all about nature-human harmony, uh, which Atmiya University very well embodies uh, becomes the foundation stone of how we think about sustainability, so to say. Second part of sustainability is what and how can we really do more with the less, which means can we optimize on the resources that we have so that we don't really run out of it in our lifetime. Third thing about sustainability is about context to it. Sustainability in any part of Europe would be very different versus our context here in India. So it, it's all context-centric. It's about human nature harmony. Uh, it is all about what can we really do more with the less. And finally, it's about value creation. And value creation comes only in two ways. Whether it comes at the level of uh, upstreaming or downstreaming. In between the two, you have no value, you have no employment, you have no jobs, you don't have any people because there's no value add. So you can create value add only at the point of the downstreaming or upstreaming. Now, having said it, I would really like to talk about nature. As I said, human nature harmony. And whatever problems we have in today's time, in our lifetime, it's all about that we have failed to strike an equilibrium uh, between our activity, which is human-centric activity, because most of the climate change, sustainability, ESG, whatever else you want to call it by, the name of, it is all about dysfunctional equilibrium between nature and the human-centered activity. We take more food and eat less, is gone. Uh, we drive in a um, diesel-driven car, polluting environment around us. I can take any example. And the only thing at the end of the story is, we have failed to keep the equilibrium between human-centered activities and the nature. It's not there. And I can tell you one thing, which I learned after my travel across Asia, Africa, Europe, we, we have been talking about G20 or whatever. It's all fine. But I can tell you, you talk about G7, G20, G77, talk about any grouping, any block, geostrategic, political, economic, you will only figure out air is in India, the same air is in Europe, same air is in Africa. People are 
a different varying degree of progress, prosperity, and development. But I can tell you, nature is very mysterious. If you don't take care of it, it's going to take care of you very well. When COVID came and vaccine were, vaccines were being made, many people were going, especially those in academic high-end research institutions, to going to gutters and trying to figure out you know, what can they really get out of it? And I learned it after a lot of talks with people at some senior level. Future is going to be very, very different and difficult for each one of us. Be it health, be it transport, be it how we live our lives, how we eat, uh, what we really do with what we have. Nature will play the dominant role. And I can tell you, every problem of our health we had a presentation on health in the morning. It will all go down to gutters, rivers, nalas, one of the dirtiest things that we can't even see with our open eyes. Because the future will mean that bacteria will not be controlled by antibiotics. You will have superbugs. They will be immune to penicillin. They'll be immune to injections that we had when the COVID was there. And finally, the solution is going to come from the nature. So cocktails will be prepared and put into our bodies. So be careful of doing what you do or what I do. Can we really try to do things in a way that we can have consideration for the equilibrium of harmony between our activities and the nature? Having said it, let me very briefly talk about some of the works which some of the academic institutions have been doing. And it's very simple. Let me take the example of Kerala University. I went there about a decade back. And when I was talking to the vice chancellor, I was told they are adding a lot of value to society in the city of Trivandrum by producing cheaper electricity out of the premises given to University of Kerala. They were creating value, adding value. They were giving electricity at 40% cheaper rate. It was then coal, then hydro. Now it is renewable. So Kerala University example, Manipur. They had a lake which used to supply water to the city. It, it dried up because we uh, began to put uh, plastic bottles and everything else. Now they're reviving the lake which will provide good, nice, portable water to the city, and people are going to really benefit from it. Pillai Saab is not here, but let me say, his university has been trying to become green and SDG compliant. So they are doing it. Atmiya University has been doing it. And now NAC has made it mandatory that every university has to go green, and there has to be SDG audit. So. What is really going to really happen is when we fail as human beings to sort of not be able to maintain the equilibrium, then you will have regulatory bodies to come and help you out in trying to uh, support you in doing what is best needed. All that I would really like to say in the end, in abundance care of the scarcity of the time here, the three things are very, very important. And I'm only going to repeat what I said in the beginning. Take care of the nature around you. If you don't take care of the nature, nature is going to take care of you. Second, every solution of whatever kind, transport, agriculture, our living, our burning fossil fuel, it is all really going to bury us in a very, very big way. We don't really take care of it in time. And finally, whatever goes around will come around. So let's try to remember one thing. That nature is there on the top. Humans are there at the bottom. And I can tell you, it's an equilibrium between the two which is going to save the day for each one of us. Let everything be subsidiary and incremental to building that harmony which is much sought after between the human-centered activities and what nature has to offer to us. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Puran Pandey. Now I request one of the most senior and learned person, Mr. Chitranjan Sarangi Sahib, to really 
come to the podium and share his perspective with all of us and enrich us. Mr. Chitranjan, please. This is the second time that I am in the university, thanks to Vice Chancellor Sahab and to respected Tyagabal Lavji Swamiji. I am fascinated with the august presence of the dignitaries world over here. My experience has been not from one track. I have been in the government. Before that, I have been against the government. I have been into seven nation level movements which succeeded against the corporates and the government. And then even I was taken as the consultant in the top uh, research institutions in, like ICFRE, Indian Council for Forest Research and Education. And then now I am in government, science and technology department, though I am from commerce background as the director of it as a mission director. So you can understand a pagal, a mad man is in your front. Huh. So I don't know why Dr. Tripathi selects me. I don't think I have the caliber. Uh, and he has made me a VIP and uh, put it in me in an aristocrat hotel uh, with other top dignitaries. Uh, I'm a layman living with the tribes. The civilization today is going to collapse. It is not Chitranjan saying, it is the Pope San Francis saying repeatedly. The last speech was on October 4th. He warned the world leaders that you are all hypocrites. You are not playing up to the mark. Your weaknesses are visible. The human civilization is going to collapse. If you remember all, that speech was so famous. Before that, he has repeatedly said that the science and technology is creating havoc on the society and the community is unable to rise up to the occasion. Before that, David Attenborg, the physicist, and my respected physicist, Stephen Hawking, repeatedly said that the science and technology has bereft the community from their basic rights and a, and a global war which you are trying to pacify is inevitable for survival. The young people who are here are for their ambition and competition to be individualistic and consumeristic. They have no interest for the temperature rise, the climate change that they are going to face tomorrow. The frustrating situation is that we have been fighting with each other. The civilization has four pillars. One is the nature. The second is the society. The third is the government. And the fourth is the market. What do we see now? The four are fighting with each other. History says that 30 such civilizations have collapsed in the last 30,000 years. And we are not, the science and technology cannot save us as we are dreaming. That Pope has warned in his speech in 2022. Why I am taking Pope's name? Because in India we have 70 lakh sannyasis and nobody has the courage to come up and say this. We don't have it. This is the irony of the fact. The transfusion of, we are all talking about something else other than the conservation of biodiversity and livelihood sustenance. The transfusion of it can only save the civilization and the harmonious relationship between the four has to be built up. Today or next generation have to do it. It is the responsibility which someone has to take, and Chitranjan stands here last 40 years, who have delivered results. Therefore, we have 73rd Constitutional Amendment and 74th, which is historical, which is monumental, and now 
we have at least 150 villages out of 6 lakh villages in country who are completely self-sustained without your help. All the dignitaries of this country have not cooperated other than few IAS officers of which one of the son was here yesterday, Satya Nadella. His father was my guide once upon a time. He was a top honored IAS officer in the country, Zuhandhar. And his guru counted me as a rebellious son, Dr. Brahmadev Sarma. And the present IAS officer also, Sarat Chandra Bihar, who is Ajim Premji Foundation Chief Advisor. These three IAS officers, and I, I say, I say them adored officers in front of the adored clerks. I, in front of them I say you people are adored clerks only and nothing else. But the policy decisions, whatever suggestions are coming, are just dustbins. Because I have worked with the ministry, I have worked with the planning commission, I have thrown my resignation in front of my guru, Zuandhar, saying that entire planning commission is intellectually bankrupt so far as tribal development is concerned. I have no time to spend it here. here. Sorry. Why? And this happened in 2008. What a change has come, come up in Niti Aayog? Nothing. Only some, some third grade, third grade consultants who designed the policy of this country. And Joint Secretary signs on it, signs on it, and that is, becomes the law. Third grade, why I am saying? Because we the management people, Professor Tripathi will say, we the management people would prefer to go to the government otherwise, unless or otherwise we have some vested interest. Because the salary is so low, who cares? To obey an adored clerk, we have so many opportunities to go. Of course, today IIM has decreased so much that there are so much of unemployment that anybody would run for that job. IIMs have been degraded. Sorry to say, madam. I, I, when I am on the dais, I don't fear. My point here is to, I'm, I have written three page note which may create a brainstorm, which may create a thunder. But it is with the vice chancellor. You may get it. I would not obey it for five minutes at least. <laughs> Sorry, I am deeply sorry. You already communicated your rebellion. Yes, sir. <laughs> I respect that. Biodiversity, I am precisely coming to what I have said. May be recorded in your brains, if you can. Because the priorities are different for you and for me. For me, 70% of the population, for them, Livelihood is above the life. Sir, please note it. I am criticizing my predecessor, my predecessor speaker. 70% of them are suffering from survival question. Their children are dying out of medicine, out of food. And survival is a question, livelihood is a question. So I am coming to biodiversity and transfusion of biodiversity and livelihood is my point. So that we together can save this civilization. So, biodiversity is the basis for the continuous evolution of species and ecosystems, which we have lost. We are losing drastically. Government of India admits it. All governments are admitting it. UN admits it. That endangered species are increasing. Extinguished species are numerous. Two critically dependent aspects are ecological safety and livelihood security which need to be addressed for the conservation and sustenance of biodiversity. I'm coming, I'm switching over. The social and ecological consequences of dominant patterns of development raise fundamental questions about the meaning and content of development. They reinforce and they add new dimensions to the critics of processes and patterns of growth driven by profit-oriented markets. I am a representative of market, but I don't encroach upon the lives of the people. They are, we have created success stories, one after the other, one after the other. 
So we have brought at least in these 150 villages in Maharashtra, Garchiroli and in Odisha, Rayagada district. We have created a harmonious relationship between corporate, between government, society and nature. Now nobody is migrating, nobody will come to you for jobs, for employment. Nobody from those villages. They are quite satisfied with 25,000, 20,000 income in a month. The whole family is happy, happiness index is highest than we the civilized people, so called. Come and see. World over people are coming to see in Garichiroli, Maharashtra, and also few to Rayada, Odisha. They are coming to see how they are so self content. I'm coming to it. I will not elaborate upon it. So, the, they are driven by profit oriented markets with disregard for their impact on the livelihood security, social relations, and local institutions. Our 7,000 years of civilization, at least, are worshipping cricket players and film stars as their gods. Is it not a shame? Because we have destroyed the local institutions. We have destroyed our culture. We the big people, the celebrities. I hope if we would have been born before independence, India would have taken another 100 years to be independent. My, my generation, I am saying. Development is a misnomer. Today, no government in the world over, no the world over, how benevolent it may be, wants a society to be self-governed and sustainably developed because they fear that it would result in decline and collapse of their absolute authority. Sir, please take note of it. Madams, please take note of it because you will be facing it tomorrow. I, I will die within 10 years. I am 62. Today, today, irrespective of the educational advancements, NEP and all that, we have NEP governing body member with us. Huh? He admits that yes, more than 80% students are dropouts today. And whoever are going to the schools and colleges, it is also a business. It is also a business. So, ignorance, irrationality, greed, enviousness, we are, we are teaching them. Enviousness and irresponsible behavior have dwarfed the growth of the community. Their change in character from, uh, last time I told historically how Alan Octavian Hume reported to the parliament of um, England that uh, India has a society based on spontaneity, voluntary mutuality and cooperation. And until that society exists, it is impossible to be rule over the people of this country. This is 1860. Now we don't have it. We have individuals only in the villages. In Gujarat, you have only 38% left in the villages. In coming 10 years, it will be 28%. <laughs> and you, your cities will be beautifully designed. Sir, sir we can, can, can we conclude? No. Maybe th please. Si si 60 seconds so, instead of 5 so, minutes? So you are giving more seconds. Sir. Indigenous community. And these Western interests, so, so what is happening? They, their change in character from spontaneity, voluntaryship, mutuality and cooperation to individualism, consumerism, hypocrisy and chauvinism. Those village people, tribals, have brought disharmony and human, hu humility to the commoners. Now they are also desperate to die. Unethical and conning people have grown powerful dictators in the villages today, all over, all over the world. These vested interests encroach upon the increasing gap between the government and the society. This has resulted deprivation, marginalization, disempowerment coupled with rapacious denunciation of the natural and human resource at the grassroots. Indigenous communities does not have the courage, knowledge. I would not elaborate upon it. I would abide by a little bit. My point here is, unless 
we understand the social equilibrium, the, the, the fabrics. We cannot build up something from scratch. Academics has its roles. NGOs have collapsed already. Nobody in the villages are interested to give a glass of water to any NGO today. Please note it. So they, they are gone. My point, I, I, I will not elaborate upon, so I, I had precisely pointed what to say, but still then I am skipping all those things. What I want to say is that, unless we decide to build a, yesterday Ernest was asking me, he is not here. If you are suggesting something at a global level, what is the reason? I said marketing. See, medicinal plants and non-timber forest produce, any forest markets are 10 trillion dollars today. China is yawning 1 trillion out of it. Cross-check it through internet, whatever possible. I have been in the Ministry of Health and the IUS department. I fought a lot. We have only 8,000 crores marketing. So corporates need to be educated, not the common man. That please understand. Medicinal plants, we don't have research institutions and WHO does not have a single collaborated institution in the country. They have six in China, seven, 13 in Asia, not a single in India. So corporates, technocrats, have to take a drive that we need research institutions because we have traditional medicines, 70% of our population world over are dependent on traditional medicines. This is WHO report, 70%. My point here is to address the health issues, to address the education and to address the livelihood issues. We need not, we should not bluff again, bluff again because 70 years back, we bluffed the humanity. That see artificial um, um, fertilizers um, application, pesticides, insecticides will provide food to us. Now we are saying that is wrong. You come for chemical, uh, chemical free um, organic farming. S sir, 70 years you... back, we said that um, uh, see, allopathy is the solution to all pro health problems. Now we are saying that is, so your youth is confused whether he should follow us or should hate us, <laughs> disregard us, and find a new way. So in that context, we have to go for a global environment parliament. And find out, Ernest was inquiring how it will be. I said, forget about NGOs. 30 years back when WS World Social Organization was for getting formed, I said uh, this will be non-resultant. Today they are obsolete. So I, I, I was a founder member of World Social Organization, and I was opposed. To, I was opposing WTO as a national organ, national convener of National Alliance of People's Movements. Now my point here is, sir, we have please to respect the time. Sentence. Please, please, sir. One sentence only. Now this is the last sentence I want to say. Yeah, we have to. I have to. I own the responsibility to, to build it. We, are, we have four such centers. We can have 1,000 centers world over. If you people cooperate, it can be done in three years. If you people do not cooperate, we'll have it in 100 years. But we'll do it. Finding out the genuine persons who have sacrificed their life for the protection of the environment or the culture or the value system, like Tiagabalavji. He's a role model for me. So, identifying such persons world over and bringing them together so that they become role models for the young mass, not our Saru Khan and Sachin Tendulkar. They become the role models. Those young mass should be entrepreneurially skilled, technically skilled, and managerial skilled. So then there will be a change by those change makers, by those leaders. Thank you. Thank you so much, I'm, sir. I'm grateful for tolerating me. Thank you so much, sir. Of course, there's a lot of things to be shared, but somebody giving time is giving a portion of life. So we have to respect that as well. Coming to the conclusion, of course, uh, Gandhi ji ne 
he gave seven deadly sin and the first was science without humanity is a deadly sin religion without sacrifice is a deadly sin and following the religion i'll be sacrificing my time out of this particular activity of course business without ethics is a deadly sin pleasure without consciousness is deadly sin and another three you can refer to the google baba as such i'll i'll just share some of the strategies through which we can really mitigate this suffering there's a concept known as gross national product can we replace the middle thing gross nature product because our survival is most on the nature can we plot any day that we don't need nature what is the most important thing i'm going to the fundamental aspect then only we'll realize because what problem can be solved okay we can solve is less important to me and most of the researcher the problem which need to be solved that is essentially needed can we say that we have round the year breathable air available in a, every city having a population of more than 5 lakh people the answer is going to be not in affirmative definitely what is most essential the air can you manufacture air what is the next most important so water we have been taught water has got a chemical formula h2o i'll give two molecule of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen let's make it not possible and that is only possible when we start nurturing nature why because anything made available free we take it for granted and that granted has got everybody has talked about that this is a main man made disaster or it is basically consumption led economy as such let's can we draw a line like in engineering because i come from engineering discipline and first decision we make make or buy same way in education we need to make a decision and that is what normally we start with are we in a mass education or we in a class education same way here also we have to make a decision do i need this or i don't need it that's a first starting point for ensuring sustainability at our own level a small contribution we can make with the refusing something but it's very difficult it's very difficult because needs be sashan phir prashan which is essentially needed but we think we can govern others without governing our own self we can be dishonest to anybody but we expect honesty from all of us which is a very very challenging requirement for which we need to work out the strategy simple everybody is interested in doing value addition the simple equation is v is a function of function and cost and they are inversely related simple leave aside people like dr shiv tripathi who is basically a, an engineer turned from a mathematician right i will not use the constant uh, uh, what to call proportionality constant to it i'll take a simple equation v is equal to f by c right now everybody has committed that we want to and ask the value or we want want to decrease the value nobody will be interested in but we do it now what what are the options available if it is a fraction the numerator has to be increased or denominator has to be decreased clear that is the the simplest strategy we want to be happy or unhappy despite of doing the de- opposite activity we wish to be happy people who marry they want to be happy people who divorce also want to be happy activities are different but objective same simple equation the strategy you can work out h is equal to r by d simple happiness is a function of resources and desires what swami ji and all people of that stature the saint sages what they do like at puja swami ji also what they do do you think they have got immense access to resources if i got one unit of resource and my desires are point 1 what is my happiness 10 if i got one unit of resources but my desires are point 01 my happiness goes 100 and the equation goes like this third aspect challenges are primarily of three nature energy because people are competing for there are wars there is a history behind it they compete for supply and demand of natural resources definition of environment has to change it will undergo change definitely people who are not having cash will no longer be treated as poor people who don't have access to natural resources will be termed as poor we have seen in covid people were struggling begging for oxygen cylinders all of us because i come from a medical university which i am part of we have seen that so my request would be let's adopt those strategies energy is one aspect environment is second aspect and third is employability it could be self employment or it is a paid employment when it comes to environment it is environment which is basically enveloping us we are part of environment we are not here to exploit it if we exploit it despite of all material resources we will not be able to find our place of happiness in this particular thing 
sacrificing rest part, I just leave it to you. It was a wonderful session. Now, maybe for some time, we can open this particular session for question and answer in case you have. Else, thank you so much. It was really wonderful experience for me, bringing me here, and I'll end my thing, my, my sentiment I wish to express for Atmia University by a line or couple of lines from a very revolutionary and very patriotic son of soil, Sri Ramavata Tyagiji, who written a poem. I'll be begging pardon to my foreign experts. They will not be able to understand, but I'll definitely try to translate when we meet in person. There's a, this is an age of construction, reconstruction, deconstruction, right? Nirmano ke paavan yug mein hum charitra nirman na bhule. Swar sadhana ki yandhi mein vasudha ka kalyan na bhule. Vasudha, dhati maa ko bolte hum. Kyunki humari sari cheejen, Bhagwan Bhasar ke ilawa sab dhati se aati hai. Metal, mineral, fauna, flora, herb, sharp, everything. राइट निर्माणों के पावन युग में हम चरित्र निर्माण ना भूले स्वार्थ साधना की आंधी में वसुधा का कल्याण ना भूले माना माना अगब अगाध संधु है संघर्षों का पार नहीं किंतु रुकना मझधारों में साहस को स्वीकार नहीं जटिल समस्या सुलझाने को नूतन अनुसंधान ना भूले स्वार्थ साधना की आंधी में वसुधा का कल्याण ना भूले जय हिंद थैंक यू टू ऑल ऑफ यू uh, so it is a time to honor our panelists. So I request now, I request to the Dr. Wolfgang Amman, sir, uh, to present a memento to today's station chairperson moderator, Professor Rakesh K. Mudgal. So give a huge round of applause to the sir. I request technical team to switch off the projector, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Dr. Rakesh Mudgalji to present a memento to today's session distinguished speaker, Professor T. Devi Mem, as a symbol of respect. Request technical team to show the poster, please. Sir, be on the dais, sir, please. So, again, request to the sir to present a member to Dr. Deep Mala Began, madam, as a symbol of love and respect. Again, to present a memento to today's session, distinguished, distinguished speaker, Sri Puran Chandra Pandeji, as a symbol of respect. Distinguished speaker, she Chitranjanji, as a symbol of respect, love, and many things, sir. sir and thank you to all for wonderful plenary sessions so request all 
to be joined the presentation track, which is about to start in 10 minutes. And the venues and everything has been mentioned in the schedules. So please, uh, please join. And just request to all dignities, dignities for the group photograph. Please come on, guys.